Good morning, guys. Whew! Has it been an exciting morning for me? Watermelon for breakfast? It was good. But today, guys, yes, you have read the title, and you may be thinking, I'm a duo. What are you talking about? Well, guys, if you haven't seen my playthroughs on Five Nights at Freddy's, go check them out. But anyways, guys, today, we're going to be taking a look at the timeline on how much has changed. So, guys, um, prepare for some spoilers as well. So, yeah, if you don't want spoilers, um, turn off the video if you want, but... But if you want to hear the story, then please enjoy the video. Alright, let's begin, shall we? So, our story begins in the 1980s, you know, where everything is, like, cool and stuff. We meet two people, William Afton and Henry. And both of them are friends. They're, like, really good friends. And they decide to open up a diner. It's called Fred Bear's Family Diner. And they have two animatronics. One of them is named Fredbear, who will become Golden Freddy later on in the series. And the other one is called Spring Bonnie, who will turn into Springtrap later on. And the diner earns a lot of money, because... Why not? Because, you know. So, Henry and William Afton decide to open up a few other restaurants. They open up a Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria, which still same, sells the same pizza but has more animatronics, namely Freddy Fazbear, the bear, Bonnie the bunny, the bunny, Chica the chicken, the chicken, and Foxy the pirate fox, who is, of course, a pirate fox. <laughs> okay, that sounded a little bit weird when I said it, but we're not, we're not going to talk about that fully. They also open up a restaurant called Junior's. Junior's is basically a more kid-friendly friendly version of the Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria, mainly for the toddlers to be entertained. This included Toy Freddy, Toy Bonnie, Toy Chica, Toy Mango, or The Mango, or Toy Foxy, before he became The Mango, or She, because it's a she, basically, and The Balloon Boy, who is a humanoid animatronic, and trust me, Balloon Boy looks creepy, but he's annoying. So they also open up another restaurant called Circus Baby's Pizza World, and after this, Basically, William Afton is proud, and so is Henry. However, Circus Baby's Pizza World closes down on the very first day. That sucks, definitely. And it's all because of an incident that would change William Afton forever. So, what happened is that Elizabeth Afton, the daughter of William Afton, saw the Circus Baby animal trunk and went close to it. Circus Baby offered her some ice cream. She grabbed the ice cream, but Circus Baby malfunctioned. And took her, basically. Her scooper, like, scooped Elizabeth Afton inside of her suit. And she was unable to get out. So, when William Afton saw this, he was so sad. But when he found out that his daughter was still alive, in some way of being possessed, he decides to go a little bit crazy. He murders five kids and stuffs them into the suits of Freddy, Bonnie, Chica, and Foxy, including Fredbear. He also does the same with the toy animatronics, so his kill count goes to 5 to 10 immediately. And he presumably kills two other kids and stuffs them into Funtime Freddy and Funtime Foxy. And this is a theory, but I think this could be true. But we know that there's another character called Ballora. Mm -hmm. So maybe William Afton got her soul, or the remnant as it's called in FNAF, and put it inside Ballora. That would make perfect sense. So yeah, Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria has lost 12 lives from William Afton, which is just not good. And yeah, there will be more to come. So, in 1983, the events of Five Nights at Freddy's 4 begins. We encounter Michael Afton, who has nightmares about nightmarish versions of the animatronics. This includes Nightmare Freddy, Nightmare Bonnie, Nightmare Chica, Nightmare Foxy, Plush Trap, who isn't considered a nightmare but will feature him, and Nightmare Fredbear. Even a character who's just called Nightmare. Just Nightmare, that's it, basically. <laughs> Pretty ridiculous, if you ask me, but it's Scott's Games. Who knows? There was, there was also a Halloween update, but that's not even canon. So, we're not gonna talk about that one. So, in 1980. 83. The bite of 1983 happens when Michael Afton is being bullied by four bullies on his birthday, namely his older brother and his friends, and they decide to yeet him or throw him into Fredbear's mouth, and then the jaws on Fredbear snap shut, and Michael Afton is dead, because Fredbear was trying to close his mouth, and this ended up happening. So yeah, 
Crying Child just died immediately from that wound. So, William Afton, who is so sad about this, decides to go a little bit more crazy. He decides to rebuild his son and murder Charlie, Henry's daughter. And this eventually causes the security puppet, a program built by Henry, to go ahead and protect Charlie. However, this did not go well. So, the puppet found Charlie in the back alley, dead, and he just went on top of her. And it's so weird. And then, boom, Charlie's soul possesses the puppet, and basically, she's fine now. So, William Afton decides to go into his basement and reprogram Michael Afton as a Michael Afton AI, which is basically a robot human. So, yeah, you can imagine him doing that work. So, yeah, and about Fred Bear's Family Diner, it was closed down, along with Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria, which would close down in the 19... It was, in the 1980s, I believe, because, you know, we're getting close to the 1987s. So, the estimate year for this would probably be a good 1985, maybe? I'm not too sure. But, continuing. So, after William Afton builds the Michael Afton AI, he sends Michael to go to the Circus Babies Pizza World restaurant to try and find Elizabeth Afton, who's still trapped inside of Circus Baby. The... So basically, the restaurant, Circus Baby's Pizza World, has been rented out for private parties, which is kind of weird if you ask me, but okay. So, during that night there, Circus Baby has a plan. So, she merges Ballora, Funtime Freddy, Bonbon, bon, and Funtime Foxy into a messy pile full of, full of um, you know, wires and eyeballs, so you can imagine, like, eyeballs sticking out and they create Ennard, an imperfect version of an animatronic that looks something straight out of a horror movie. So Michael Afton gets scooped in the scooping room and Ennard takes his body to go outside in the real world. However, something happens. So Michael Afton manages to throw up Ennard and Ennard goes into the sewers where they abandon Circus Baby. So Funtime Freddy stays in command of Ennard and soon he would become Molten Freddy. Baby would become Scrap Baby, and Michael Afton would stay alive if to find out that his father was a murderer. So, basically, Michael Afton changed his name from Michael Afton to Fritz Smith in FNAF 2, and then Mike Schmitz into FNAF 1. And then the events of FNAF 2 begins. The year is 1987, and Junior's has been renamed the new Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. And Jeremy Fritz Gerald, the security guard, heard basically sat down on his chair to survive five nights with these animatronics. Toy Freddy, Toy Bonnie, Toy Chica, the Mangle, Balloon Boy, and the Puppet. And the Withered animatronics were also coming for him. We had Withered Freddy, Withered Bonnie, Withered Chica, and Withered Foxy. They were all coming for him. And he's able to pull it off and survive, and yeah. Oh, d I forgot to mention, to where Michael Afton goes to sister location? Yeah, that takes place in FNAF sister location, so yeah. Just wanted to get that out of the way. I can't believe I missed that. But hey, I said it right now. Let's continue. So after Jeremy Fitzgerald survives five nights, he basically is about to leave and do the day shift. However, on the day shift, he's bitten on his frontal lobe by an animatronic, presumably the Mangle or Foxy. Because due to seeing Foxy's jaw dislocated in FNAF 1, it's got me thinking, is it Mangle who did the bite or Foxy? Well, for all we know, it could be Mangle, because he's the one, she's the one that's only broken down. And that makes perfect sense, basically. So, Michael Afton, named Fritz Smith, takes the night shift and survives the sixth night, finishing up Jeremy Fritz Joe's week. However, he's fired due to tampering with the animatronics, and of course, doing his odor, because he's been rotting for years. You know, you gotta go crazy. So then, after which, in the 1990s, FNAF 1 begins, where Michael Afton decides to go back to Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria. And after the toy animatronics have been scrapped out permanently and destroyed, presumably, he survives five nights with Freddy, Bonnie, Chica, and Foxy. And even Golden Freddy comes out to play as well, which is pretty terrifying if you ask me. So, and for some reason, the puppet stays in the FNAF 1 location as well. We don't know where the puppet is, but we know the puppet is there, because yeah. So, yeah. 
But after a while, basically, Michael Lafton gets fired for his tampering with the animatronics and odor. And the phone guy dies on his fifth night with, by the Golden Freddy character. So, Michael Lafton is able to survive and leave the building as Mike Schmitz. But is fired due to the same reason he was fired in FNAF 2. His odor and his tampering with the animatronics thing. Which has got to be just ridiculous. So then 1983 comes, and we come to Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria, where it's been abandoned and no one is there. So William Afton thinks this is the best chance to get his revenge. So he goes to this abandoned restaurant and basically dismantles all the animatronics, because the remnant that, that he does not know about, he now knows it. Because basically this remnant can give him immortality, which has to be pretty sick. So he destroys all five animatronics in hoping that he'll get his chance, and yeah. That's basically what happens to William Afton. You may be thinking, wait, did he get away? Well, sadly, no. But the children, they got their revenge. When they cornered William Afton in the safe room, which is a place that has been boarded off, off basically from all Fazbear employees, basically what ended up happening was that William Afton went into the Spring Bonnie animatronic suit, which has been abandoned, and when he hid in that Pacific suit, the suit's spring lock snapped shut due to it being wet, and William Afton dies immediately. And you're thinking, oh, phew, that's the end of him. Well, it's not. 30 years later, Michael Afton is still alive, Henry is growing old, but he is still alive, and programs an animatronic named Lefty, which would come after Fazbear's Fright, and the year is 2023. Basically, you know, 2023, and William Afton comes back from the dead, not as a human, but as Springtrap. And Fazbear Fright has a week before opening up. So Michael Afton decides to return and finish the deal. So he survives five nights with Springtrap and the Phantom animatronics, namely Withered Freddy, Withered Bonnie. Well, there is no Withered Bonnie because Withered Bonnie is a Springtrap and y you get the idea. I'm just kidding. Withered Bonnie does not exist because of Springtrap, you know? But there's Withered Foxy, FNAF 1 Chica, Balloon Boy, The Mangle, and The Puppet. And each of them are called the Phantoms. So Phantom Freddy, Phantom Foxy, Phantom Chica, Phantom Mangle, Phantom Balloon Boy, and Phantom Puppet. And Springtrap is the only one in the building. So yeah. So yeah. You can imagine Springtrap just roaming around the building trying to get to Michael Afton. And luckily for us, Michael Afton is able to pull through and survive five nights. And he burns down the restaurant on the 6th night, basically the horror attraction called Fazbear's Fright. And after burning this down, he's expecting his father to be dead. But unfortunately, he survived and became Scrap Trap. So yeah, can we please stop memeing him as Jimmy Neutron now? Thank you. <laughs> Continuing. So, after this, 2026 begins. And Pizzeria Simulator begins with Michael Afton surviving for an entire week. Henry is able to capture Lefty and put him down as a performer. So, Lefty is not allowed to perform because he has the puppet inside of him. Or her, because it's a female. So, Scrap Baby, Molten Freddy, who is a traitor to Circus Baby, but they still work together. Along with Scrap Trap and Lefty, decide to all work together to try and kill Michael Afton. However, on Saturday... Things do not go the way they planned it. Suddenly, just when Circus Baby thinks they've won, Henry is able to burn down the restaurant and and kill every single animatronic, resting their souls. Now, William Afton gets sent into the Underworld, or H-E Double Hockey Sticks, because I'm kid-family friendly, okay? And I just said that because Matt Pat likes to say it, and <laughs> I think it's funny, but yeah, it's also a great way not to curse that much. And William Afton gets sent into Ultimate Custom Night, which is a place to where he can die to the monsters that he created, namely the Nightmares and the FNAF 1 crew. Finally, in 2030, possibly, Fast Red Entertainment has found out that Oswald from Into the Pit, you know, the Into the Pit book, has made rogue games about their franchise. And we know this because Scott said on a Reddit post that he was not part of the timeline, so yeah. You guys thinking, oh yeah, Scott Coffin's part of the timeline, yay. Scott says, no, I'm not part of the timeline. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, it's Oswald, basically, from Into the Pit. And I have not read 
at the Fast and Fright books, I only watch Darko's videos on them, and I find them a lot interesting, because the series, because what Scott has done with the franchise, he's made the Twisted series, and he's made the Fast and Fright books, they're just so good to, like, read, basically. So, continuing. So, William Afton is sent to the underworld, and then he's resurrected from the dead and placed in the VR game. And this time, he knows what he's doing. Because after Fazbear Entertainment scans the circuit boards to recreate their many friendly faces, such as Freddy, Bonnie, Chica, and Foxy, some of them turn out to be outright aggressive, basically. And this was because of Glitch Trap, who is William Afton. So, on the first day of beta testing, Jeremy Fitzgerald, who is still alive and possibly aging as an adult, basically saw Glitch Trap, and this is not good, because if Glitch Trap is, like, turning a lot upside down, then yeah. So, one day, when our good old friend, the tape girl, decides to return to work, she finds a guillotine paper slicer. You know, those slicers that you hold down and then it slices paper like this? Yeah, that's what we're talking about. So... Jeremy Fitzgerald cut off his own face, and there was blood everywhere. Now, Takeo says that it was a mask and that it was ink, but that is no mask. That's Jeremy's face, and that's his blood. And Takeo even says that he didn't see his face, and that he had the visor covering his head. So, basically, Jeremy Fitzgerald had died. And then Takeo saw the anomaly, so she tried to delete him, but Glitch Trap is just too powerful. So, she decides to split him into different tapes. And the more tapes we collected, then the more glitch trap formed, and then boom, he was there immediately. And we realized, oh no, we're done for. So basically, in the ending, basically, um, glitch trap gets turned into a plushie. So yeah, we can all stop making memes about him being in t turned into a marketable plushie. Just wanted to say that because it's funny. But continuing, so. Vinny, or Vinny, whatever her name is, basically is the reluctant follower. So she decides to follow Glitchtrap's every order to try and do some evil. And she works with Glitchtrap to, you know, do stuff, basically. Some evil stuff. And FNAF AR takes place in the same year, where, basically, you know, a lot happens. So the animatronics are turned into augmented reality characters and are meant to be friendly. However, due to Glitchtrap entering the system and knowing a little bit about technology, he manages to get Springtrap on the assembly line. And Springtrap was never planned for the assembly line because, you know, it's William Afton. So, yeah, things are not looking good. Now, Security Breach is not going to be mentioned on this list. I want to do a video about me playing it, and if we can beat it, then I'll do a theory video on everything that we know and the ending explained. Because, you know... Gotta get those endings explained. So yeah, I do have some plans for other timelines as well, and yeah. But, yeah, FNAF AR takes place after the VR title. So, there you go. That's a full Five Nights at Fri Freddy... Did I say Friday? I meant Five Nights at Freddy's timeline explained. <laughs> Gosh, I'm already messing up my sentences. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy this video, please make sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel... And make sure to turn on notifications for more content. Alright guys, I'll see you all later, okay? Peace out and have a good day.